thought this new year off with a main event that's going to be a good competitive fight. I also think, hopefully not, but I think we might get head clashes in here. Perez been cut from head clash in his career, but Marcelo involved in head clashes in two of his last three fights. So you can look for that a little bit. Hopefully that does not interrupt the fight in a way where we don't get a complete satisfaction. Darlis Perez and the white trunks. Jonathan Marcello wearing red. Marcello, with that red, he's gonna use those legs too. He's gonna move a little bit, in and out, side to side, look to pick spots, look to set up that right hand. Use the jab to kind of set the table. Beat later on with the right hand. Perez, he's a little bit of a slow starter. I didn't expect Marcello to get started a little faster. Perez is going to wait for a spot or hope for a spot where Marcelo will stand with him a little bit. Perez's lone loss came to Yuri Gamboa, and it was a fight that Perez was very competitive in. You mentioned slow starts. It seemed like Perez lost the first five or six rounds and almost swept the last four or five. And since then, he's won three in a row, including winning the WBA title vacated. Oh, it's just time. Perez just tied Marcelo coming in. Marcelo has a habit of jumping in from a little too far away sometimes. And you can expose yourself when you do that. If your opponent is ready to punch. Perez was ready to punch and nailed him with a left hook jumping in. You saw how Micello reacted to that saying, come on. Micello seems to be the fighter that's more willing to just stand in there and turn this into a brawl. We saw that he did that at times against Rustam Nugayov last year. Yeah, I think what Perez really wants to do I think Marcelo learned his lesson from the guy up. Marcelo won't stand in front of you too long. He'll move a little bit and try to box more. But for Perez, I think Perez is waiting for Marcelo to make a mistake. Look to do what he did about 40 seconds ago. Time Marcelo. I think he feels like Marcelo's a little faster, but timing can beat speed. And Perez, again, is going to look to use that timing to take advantage maybe some over-aggression of Marcelo. Interesting fight. A little tiny bit of a chess match, but with a little aggression to those pawns being moved forward. Good double jab there by Perez. Marcelo going down to the body. Perez says that was a little low. Yeah, as you said, Perez, a little bit of a slow starter, comes on strong late in the fight. So I think a lot of pressure on Marcelo to get a little bit of a lead early on. Put some rounds in the bank that he might need later on. <laughs> Scheduled for 12 rounds. Perez has been 12 rounds twice. He's got a one and one record. Make sure you score this fight. See, on Perez Friday likes to time you. Again, Perez, he's yes, waiting for Marcelo yes, to come in. And then he looked to nail him, time him as he came in. Tempo. <laughs> Todd, you know that old saying, catch him coming and going, catch him coming in and catch him going out. Exactly what Perez did right there. Watch again. Marcelo jumps in, catches him to the body, does Perez, and then as Marcelo goes straight out on a straight line with his hand a little low, catches him again. Perez, that round for me goes to Perez. Perez said in the gym he's been working on his speed and explosiveness. We certainly saw some speed there, landed two punches in about a second. And we saw a calmness to be able to recognize Marcelo coming in from too far away. He recognized it, and again, he had something for him. He timed him coming in, and then he gave him something as he went out. Uh, break. Of course, there's a rich history of boxing from Perez's home country of Colombia. Marcelo from Peru, not nearly as much. Teddy, you'll appreciate this story. I did an internet search for famous Peruvian boxers, and the first thing that came up was a picture of underwear with a Peru flag on it. Those are Peru boxers that are famous. <laughs> so Micello doesn't, doesn't have a very big hill to climb to become one of Peru's most famous boxers. Certainly a win tonight. The WBA lightweight title will do the trick. For well, one thing, if he's going to do the trick, if Marcelo is going to do more than just wear boxing shorts, he's going to actually carry them to a title, well, he's going to have to carry that right hand a little higher because Perez is zeroing in with left hooks, and look at the right hand of Marcelo. 
doesn't stay up. See, there's a little bit of a mirage with Marcelo, a little bit of an illusion, Todd, because Marcelo looks like he keeps his hands up, but they're not. They're down just enough to catch him. The man who keeps his hands up, really up, Perez. Well, they're both five feet seven inches, but looking at him, Marcelo looks three or four inches shorter out there. Yeah, he does. Perez has a little bit of a longer wingspan, too, and he should use that wingspan be with the jab. Control that mage like that. Control that mage with the jab and force. If I was in his corner, I'd be controlling the range with Perez. I'd be controlling the range with the jab, with the longer jab, and force Marcelo to reach in. Make him make mistakes. And then, of course, capitalize when he makes those mistakes. Time him coming in. As Perez showed that he could do in the first round. Again, look at the hands, Todd. Of Marcelo. You know, again, he gives you the illusion. Hey, he keeps his hands up pretty good. No. Unless they're all the way up to protect your chin, protect that vulnerable area. They're not really up. Here's a one two from Marcelo, and Perez waves it off as if it didn't do any damage. Well, quick hands by Marcelo, but more importantly, what was the delivery system for those punches for Marcelo's the legs. He's got better legs, and he's going to need those legs to get into the score, to get out of trouble. You can see Marcelo wants to draw Perez in now, try to give him a little bit off balance. Round three of a scheduled 12 in the lightweight division. Jonathan Marcelo out of Peru wearing the red trunks, taking on Darlis Perez from Colombia in the white trunks. Only loss for Perez, we talked about it, was a decision to former world champion Gamboa. Nothing to be embarrassed about there. Only loss for Marcella was that fight you touched on it with Nagaya. He got knocked out. He got broken down in that fight. For me, that was the opportunity for him to get to where he is now, to be a more complete fighter. I think that Marcella grew, learned, and grew from that fight with the guy of where he really, really got taken apart piece by piece in that fight with the pressure and the body punching of a never stop Nagaya. I think Marcelo's a better fighter because of it. That fight against Nagaya happened right here in April of last year at Shumash Casino. Actually, it's April of 2013. Can you see? You know, the problem with Marcelo, when he uses those legs to get out, he does it with his looking for that right hand there. He's doing it, stepping out. Marcelo straight back and with his hands low. Opportunity for Perez to step with him. Time him stepping back with the left hook. Monday night at 8.30, ESPN presents the inaugural college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T from Arlington, Texas. Number two, Oregon, and the fourth ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. You want to know my pick? I do. Well, I'm pretty good at that. I like Oregon. The Ducks are going to fly. Well, Oregon lost their best receiver today, suspended for that game. Ohio State with a little bit of an edge, at least, in that department. Yeah, that's going to hurt. But you know what? They have a lot of depth. And with that depth, they have a lot of speed. You're saying depth or depth? Um, no, hopefully there's no depth. <laughs> But I, listen, I never proclaim to be Orson Welles here. I just know boxing pretty well. But I think that they do have good depth that passes your elocution uh, test. And I think that they will show plenty of speed in that fight. And right now, Marcelo showed a little bit more speed than Perez, but it's, it's man, the light of Oh, and the left hand connects as Perez's head snaps back for the first time. The liability for, again, for Marcelo is when he steps out, steps out with those hands low, and Perez has opportunities to step with him. Tell me if I'm wrong here, but it seems like Marcelo would much rather get into a slugfest, exchange it out right in the middle of the ring no, than Perez would. You're completely wrong. Yes, but that's when he got knocked out about by Nagaya for his one loss. He wants to mix it up, fight a little bit, move a little bit, live for another day. Yeppo! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If you can't get enough of Teddy Atlas, and quite frankly, who can't, you can follow him on Instagram, at Teddy underscore Atlas, and you can check him out on Sirius Radio. What do I owe you for that? Sirius Radio, we started our debut 
the other day, Tuesday. We're going to be on every Tuesday night, 6 to 8 East Coast time. Sirius Radio, the Sports Zone, XM, Channel 92. And our first show, our debut show, well, we felt pretty good about it. We had the great Bill Parcells on. We had Oscar C. La Hoya on. We had Suleiman, uh, the son of Jose Suleiman, who took over the WBC, Mauricio Suleiman. We had him on. We had a pretty good show. It, it was fun. And if people want to get a little bit more boxing and want to get a little bit more insight, tune in. Round four of a scheduled 12 here in the lightweight division. It's been a pretty good one so far. Jonathan Micello and Darlis Perez. In each round, they get more and more feisty. Less about chess and more about checkers now. Nice one, too, from Micello, who stepped in with those punches. Again, Micello has the quicker hands and the quicker feet. And that combination, at least the last couple rounds, has worked for him. But Perez is waiting on, and he might be waiting on at the end of the night with a loss if he waits on it too long. He's waiting on an opportunity just to purely time Marcelo coming. He's got to find another way to come up with some offense, not just wait for the counter, not just waiting for that opportunity for Marcelo to make a mistake. And I think that opportunity for Perez would be in the jab. He's got that, again, said it earlier, he's got that reach advantage. Use that jab a little bit. Nice counter right hand there for Perez. Yeah, but it didn't really land. What did land then probably doesn't catch the eye of the public because he was not sensational looking. It was a nice right uppercut to the body by Perez. Does a pretty good job of going to the body when Marcelo comes in. Let's take a look at Teddy Atlas's scorecard through three rounds here in our main event. He has it two rounds to one for the Peruvian, Jonathan Micello. And so too do you, our boxing fans at home, two rounds to one for Micello. And the reason why they so too have Marcelo winning is again, Marcelo using those legs, quicker hands, creating offense with those quicker feet coming in, going out. And Perez doing too much waiting, waiting for that one shot to time Marcelo making a mistake. Two spots to catch Marcelo, the way Perez looks at it. One is when he's coming in, time him, like he tried there. The other, catch him when he goes out, when he goes out straight. Like right there. Again, you could see, you could just see it, Tom. Yes, the mindset of Perez and the fight plan of Perez. He punches after Marcelo punches. Take a look here, I talked about that body shot that you might not have caught. There it was, a right uppercut by Perez to the body of Marcelo. Marcelo comes in, Perez pretty good at going underneath. Problem is, uh, uh, it's hard to see, pause. Uh, well, that means it's hard to see for the judges. And you, and you know, that's actually a good point. Sometimes when we complain about some of the close decisions, not the ones that are so obvious, right. but the close decisions, sometimes the judges, even though they should be seeing them, they're not always seeing and necessarily... Or maybe one judge sees it, the other two don't. But not always seeing the body punches. And you're right, you're talking more about angle, whether it's head or body, where they're positioned, whether or not they're hit by the ref, whether or not they're in a position where one guy back, height, a little bit of division from a judge that might be on one side of the ring. But I'm just talking about purely body punching right now. A lot of times in the amateurs and in the pros, Sometimes the judges really don't give enough credit for body work. So far, Micello's body of work in this fight has been pretty good. We're in round five, scheduled through 12. Lightweight division, the WBA interim title is on the line. It's currently held by Darlis Perez. You mentioned that Perez was a bit of a slow starter. Now's the time he needs to start picking it up. And again, even though you know that there's urgency and he needs to pick it up, you are still attached to your temperament, to your personality. And the mindset, the temperament, the personality of Perez is the time you. And there it is. He's not going to lead a lot. He's waiting for Marcelo to lead. Just watch. You can see right here. He'll wait for Marcelo to lead. 
and then he'll look to time Masello on the back end, like that. Again, like a body shot, the referee's gonna warn him. That's a short as low, but he's gonna warn him for being low. But you understand from that the intention of Perez. He's looking to time Masello downstairs. <laughs> Always Perez talked about how important this fight was. Said, I'm motivated for my children's future. Their future is at stake. A win here puts you one step up. Another big fight, more money. Perez has been on the floor in two of his last five fights. I'm sure that Marcelo is aware of that information. So there's the jumping in by Marcelo. Very dangerous. Got away with it there. Got a pass. But very dangerous, especially with a guy like Perez that will look to time you when you jump. And Marcelo's also been knocked down. He's actually been knocked out by Rustam Nugayov. A straight right hand, one punch knockout right here at Shoe Match. And since then, Marcelo has not lost. His first fight in six months. Says he learned a lot from that loss to Rustam Nugayev. He's a better puncher, quicker with his feet, better with his temperament. So far, pretty good as round five comes to a close. Tempo. Watch here as Perez times Marcelo coming in with that little left hand underneath. He got warned for it, but I thought it was clean, to be honest. And watch Marcelo jump in. That's dangerous. Look at the way he leaves himself open, off balance. Opportunity as the fight goes on for Perez to catch him. What do they say in basketball? I mean, you know, you cover all sports. Um, I'm aware of all sports. But on defense, they always tell you in basketball, don't leave your feet. Well, the same thing goes true with boxing. You shouldn't leave your feet. And Marcelo has a terrible technical habit of leaving his feet when he comes at you. And when you do that, a lot of times, bad things can happen. Let's take a look at Teddy's scorecard. That off-balance style, those technical mistakes, cost him around. Perez now has two rounds under his belt, according to Teddy. You at home have it three rounds to two. You've given the last two rounds to Darlings Perez. We asked Perez his style, he said, I'm not a flashy boxer, I'm very calm in the ring, I keep my distance, and I walk my opponents down. And right now, Perez on the front foot, pressuring Marcelo, who's back against the ropes. Again, the one fault for Perez that you could really fault him for is that he doesn't really know how to create offense in a consistent manner on the front end. You don't have to do it on the back end like that. When Masella comes at him, he'll come at Masella. But on the front end, on the leading end, he doesn't, he doesn't really use that weight, that wingspan I talked about quite enough. Very useful, champ. Should be doing more of that. But the mindset for Perez, and he will stay that, is that. To counter. To catch Masella when Masella's making a mistake. When Masella for the most part, is coming at him. Do you feel like Perez has gotten more and more comfortable as this fight's gone along? He's oh. coming on here. He's definitely coming on here. He's, he's being true to his reputation that we talked about early on. Start slow, finish this fast. Both of Micello's eyes are beginning to puff up. Redness is engulfing his face as counter-punching Perez continues to land those shots. There's another one on right here. Oh, Perez wants more redness to engulf the face of Micello. Just keep using that jab, that long jab, that Perez can get the drop done. And you're right, there is swelling, especially underneath the left eye of Marcelo. They're going to need the right cut man, the right corner man in there, and then he can catch him going out again. Talked about it earlier. Marcelo, catch him coming. He goes out with his hands low, straight, and he can go with him. The right hand connects from Perez, and Marcelo goes down. They're going to call it a slip. I'm not sure about that, Teddy. Marcelo started to get broken down. Right hand there. Again, the counter punch, the timing punch of Perez. He waits for Marcelo to throw a jab. The right hand. That time he gets off first. He saw that Marcelo was about to start a left hook. 
What did Perez do? He stepped in with the right hand, beat him to the mark. And you saw Micello go to the canvas there. Our referee, Lou Moret, said no, he was pulled down. So it was not considered a knockdown. But a good round for Darlies Perez, who's really coming on strong here as we're in round seven of a scheduled 12. And I didn't get a chance to really peek at that replay properly, but that was a good punch that landed, you know, when the knockdown was not counted. Good, clean punch landed. It looked like Perez had his forearm behind Micello's neck and was kind of pulling him down, but certainly a big power punch had just landed moments before. And Bernardo Asuna just told me, Teddy, that Jonathan Micello's corner was stressing to keep your hands up. Well, I was stressing that early on, but I'm not his corner. Right. See, that's something, an all kidding aside, can't get stressed or stressed. I'm sorry, my pronunciation's off again. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But it can't be stressed. I did that properly. In the corner the night of the fight. That has to be put into place in the gym. Those are habits that have to be ingrained in training in the gym every day. Because if those habits aren't there, they're not going to be there the night you get in the ring. It's that simple. Teddy has it all square right now through six rounds. Our Facebook viewers have it four rounds to two for Darlie's Perez, 2008 Colombian Olympian, a national champion six times over at the 132 pound mark, is currently the WBA interim lightweight champion, and that belt is on the line here tonight. Another thing they're gonna need in the court, I started to touch on the last round, and I got off because of the action. Marcelo needs the guy in the corner to use that end throw, that Solid piece of metal that you put in ice. You get it really cold. And you gotta put it on underneath those eyes to keep that swelling down. Stay ahead of that swelling. If you wait, the swelling or it gets to be too much to control. You have to stay ahead of the swelling. We asked Micello how he enjoyed his holidays, and he said, I didn't enjoy the holidays. I didn't have any holidays. I was training for this fight, the biggest of my life. That's how much it means to Jonathan Micello as he seeks his first world title and only the second world title in Peruvian boxing history. Yeah, well, I would argue it means just as much to Perez. Sometimes we forget that. We get on one storyline, we talk about how much it means to one fighter. It means just as much to Perez. And both fighters 31, so they know now is the time. 2015 is the year. They gotta get something going to make their careers worthwhile. Again, Marcelo being allowed to stay yes, in the fight a little yes, bit after Perez was taking control because Perez not doing a lot of leading. There's a lot of waiting for counterpunch opportunities. Teddy, let's go back to the end of round six. Was this a knockdown in your opinion? Well, good right hand there, but I'm going to say the referee was right. Not a knockdown. Good right hand. He handled it. He even threw back Marcelo, that is. But then he got pulled forward a little off balance. Good call by the referee, probably not to call that a knockdown, even though just before that, good right hand did land. So five rounds to go in our WBA Interim Lightweight Championship bout. Darlis Perez out of Colombia taking on Jonathan Micello from Peru, both fighters, 31 years old, five foot seven. It's been very identical, and the ring has been very close as well. Almost a pickup fight at this point. You know, Perez, one of the things that's serving him here, he has fought the better opposition, and he has that amateur pedigree. I mean, Marcelo has 83 amateur fights. That's all well done. But Perez, 2008 Olympic representative for Colombia. So when you fight in the Olympics, that gives you a certain, certain kind of cachet, certain kind of confidence that you fought the best in the world, and that confidence serving him tonight. Again, there's the counter punching ability of Perez and the long arms of Perez. Marcelo thought he was out of range. He stepped out with those hands low. And Perez, again, he's got that reach. Marcelo was not out of range. Perez was able, and again, Got him going out. Marcelo stepped back with those hands a little low. Probably thinks he's stepping back enough. Not judging the length of those punches from Perez. Not judging them properly. 
Perez is slowly beginning to impose his will over my cello Teddy season. Our Facebook fans, our fans on Facebook and Homer noticing as well. My cello needs to change something up. What would, advice would you give him in the corner right now, Teddy? Well, first of all, stop going straight out. You know, go out the side door. Don't go out the front door. You're going straight back. And you paid a price going straight back quite a bit tonight already. So if you eliminate that one way of Perez catching your clean punches, you put yourself in a much better position to win this fight. Keep your hands up, don't pull straight out. Go out off the side. And one other thing, if you do have to go out, don't go out high, don't go out tall. Drop down, bend and go out. Then those punches coming at you, they go over your head. See the swelling on both of my cello's eyes. Vision may be a problem here, if not now, pretty soon. Yes, I Again, you see Perez waiting for that opportunity for Marcelo to jump in. ESPN's Friday Night Fights is presented by Corona Extra. We invite you to find your beach and embark by new Elite PM. Elite PM for a better AM. You make that up, or was that copy that they write out for you? Did you like it? Yeah, I mean, you Then I made it up. You could have another <laughs> career. Ah, right, right. Round nine of 12 now. Not that you need it. <laughs> Not that you need Earlier you told me, quote, you couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> I started sending out my resume between rounds. The good news, you've gotten better since then. <laughs> I've had a strong couple of last rounds, you're just like, like Perez. You're like Perez, you come on strong. I started slow. A little bit. So my cello now trying to avoid the counter punching Perez, but to no avail, at least since round five. The last four have gone to the Colombian, according to Teddy Atlas. Those of you watching at home, pretty much the same. Six rounds to two right now for Darlis Perez, who's won three fights in a row, including winning the interim WBA title that was vacated by Yuri Gamboa. Gamboa handed Perez his only loss in a very competitive bout. Gamboa did win by decision. You know, you said something a few rounds ago. You talked about the celebrity broken down, and I agree with you to a certain degree. A little similar to the one loss that he has in the Nagaya fight that I talked about early on. He was broken down in that fight. He was just systematically taken apart from pressure, body work, catching him when he was stepping out, and ultimately right hands that put him on the floor. Perez doing the same sort of thing, but without the constant pressure, just a little more deliberately, not at the pace that Nakayev did it, but still with the same intent, and to a certain degree with some of the same effect. This is a very emotional time for Jonathan Micello. He's dedicated tonight's performance, and hopefully, for him at least, a world championship to his late grandmother. Her name was Isabel. She died less than two months ago. She said her dream was for me to be a world champion tonight. I can live both of our dreams. Well, okay, you asked me a couple rounds ago, Todd, what would I tell Marcelo? And it was shown right there. I said I would tell him, stop going back with your hands low. Stop going back straight. This round already, he has been caught with solid punches simply going back. If he eliminated that one floor, if his trainers eliminated that one floor, Marcelo would be infinitely better as a fight. A left hand connects there by, my, by Perez, a left hook, a wide one too. Where'd he catch it? On the way out, right? Absolutely. And again, that's the opportunity of Perez. To his credit, he has noticed that early on. You step up the cello, you're going to catch the cello. Tempo. Little proof of what we're talking about. Stepping straight back, Marcelo, watch. Take that right hand with you as you go. Marcelo certainly looks worse for wear. There's the mug of Perez. Not too many blemishes as for Marcelo. Puffiness under both eyes. Redness has continued to engulf the face. And we're in round 10 of 12. The WBA 
interim lightweight title on the line. I love when you talk about redness and golfing faces. <laughs> Something about that. That was a shout out for me to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm not so sure that Marcelo appreciates it, though. But he could help himself, you know, the old saying in life. You know, for me, uh, boxing is a microcosm of life. You gotta help yourself. And Marcelo not helping himself as he steps away. Again, that time he started a slow jab, and there's the counter punching senses, instinct of Perez. He knew that jab was gonna start, he got in position, and he beat him with the right hand. And Marcelo knew what he was getting into. He told us, listen, Darlish is a great fighter, but his, his style is counter punching. That's the favorite, my favorite style I like to go against, counter punchers. My boxing and movement's gonna cause him problems, but Teddy, that has not been the case the last six rounds. So for me, one of the reasons why it hasn't caused a problem is the boxing and movement was too in and out straight back, not to the side enough. It should have been more angles. The angles could have keeping Perez a little off balance for that counter punching, as he said, but the theory of it was right, the execution was wrong. Too much straight back, not enough angles for Marcelo. And again, only one man really keeps his hands up when it counts. Perez keeps them up where they need to be. Marcelo. Now. And you can sense the urgency now for Marcelo who connects with the right hand and Perez had to stretch out his jaw a little bit. And let's not forget, Perez has been on the floor in two of his last five fights. That's information that really is important for Marcelo to know now. Because if he's a little downtrodden at this point in the fight, you gotta give him hope. And part of that hope is for his corner to remind him of that. Hey, this guy's been on the floor. You can put him on the floor. So certainly an improvement now for Marcelo. This is the 10th round. He's been more aggressive. He's been more precise. And quite frankly, part of the equation is Perez stop, 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 stop. has been less busy, has taken less advantage of Marcelo stepping out, has done less punching has allowed Marcelo a landscape to get back. So a solid round for Marcelo. Let's listen into his corner. That's what you got to do. Take a deep breath. You've got to look for a Set him up with the jab and let that right hand drop. You can take advantage of the right. What's that? What's that? Yeah, let me get it. Left, left, left. Doesn't need any translation. They want more activity out of my cell. Please win round 11 and 12. We you know how to win. You can win with the double jab. That's what Nelson Fernandez is telling Bernardo Asuna with Thank the you, smooth Al. translation. No one does it better. And we're headed to the championship rounds now, 11 and 12. It's, it couldn't be anyone's fight at this point, Teddy. It's been very close as Marcelo, it seemed, may have won round number 10. His corner certainly thought he did. Well, remember, the last time we were here, we had a really, really inept decision, a very controversial decision here. And that was also in a title fight with Escadon and Tyson Cave, December 11th, but to the credit of the commission here, California State Athletic Commission, they have removed those judges. Those judges are not here tonight, and they brought up some paperwork to me before the fight, and they showed me that they had their own other judges go over that fight and do an analysis of that fight, and sure enough, they were not happy with the results. They came up with that the decision should very well have been the opposite of what it was. That fight was in Temecula in December. Tyson Cave, we thought, 
almost swept that fight. It's good to see that upon further review, five other judges thought so as well. They had it four giving it to Cave, one had it a draw. Yeah, they put together a panel of anonymous judges to review the other decision. And as you just said, as I said, they came up with the opposite result of what they put out on television that night. Steady scorecard, 96-94 for Perez. So Marcelo certainly still very much in this fight. For those of you scoring at home, you gave the last round to Marcelo as well. But you have it seven rounds to three with two to go. I have it closer. By one round. Again, that jab, if there's anything that's allowed Marcelo to stay close to the fight, sometimes it's been the lack of the use of that long jab of Perez. When he uses it, well, you can see he's got the longer reach. It sets up the right hand. You can see the effectiveness of it. Another close round here. You know, Perez has good eyes. What I mean by that is he sees everything in front of him. He watches Marcelo as he goes. Right connects and then a left from Perez. Again, good eyes. Watch Perez. Look at the concentration of those eyes. He sees when Marcelo's going to make a move forward, and he reacts to it right there. Another one. Again, Marcelo's hands were down. He was stationary, and Perez pounced on that fact. Again, good eyes. And obviously, right now, good hands by Perez. And another right hand for Perez. Marcelo claims to want more, but I don't think he does. He goes down, and that is a knockdown for Perez. And that's the end of round 11. An exclamation point from Darlis Perez. Let's listen into his corner with one round to go. You've got to stay close. Use that double jab. Use your jab and move laterally with your legs. This is the last round. Orlando Pineda with the instructions for the Close your car is what they're telling him. In the other corner, he pushed them. He pushed them is what Nelson Fernandez is telling myself. Come on, champion. Oh, there was no pushing. There was punching. And there's the right hand. That is not a push. That is a clean right hand. Another clean right hand. And here comes the knockdown. The champ sets it up. The right hand lands. Another right hand lands. He's hurt. Fell forward a little bit. Got a little bit of a push. But he was already in a bad place. Disconnected from his senses a little bit. And I didn't like the body language, quite honestly, of Marcelo when he went back to his corner time. For me, he looked like he was out of it. At the end of round six, Marcelo was given the benefit of a doubt. Said that he was pushed down, but not in the 11th round. It looked like a clean knockdown from Darlis Perez, and that could prove to be the difference in this fight. We're in the final round. WBA interim lightweight title on the line. Here's the way the scorecards shape up. Teddy Atlas has it 106-102, and Micello may need a knockout. Those of you scoring at home, eight rounds to three. And again, Micello pays the price all night long. Having those hands up, but not up enough. Down just low enough to leave himself available to right hands. And also, consistently, constantly, Micello stepping back straight where Perez could go with him. Marcelo's corner asking him to do something dramatic. And he's got a minute 40 to do so. A left hand, a hook there from Perez. Again. For me, the storyline, Perez, catch him coming. Catch him coming and catch him going. And he caught him coming again. Marcelo, wobbly, shaking. Still on his feet, though, with a buck 20 to go in round 12. Catch him coming. Catch him going. And again, right now, Perez, good eyes. 
Look at those eyes. I mean, he's like a tiger stalking his prey. He's looking for the opportunity for Marcelo to come forward, and he's ready to pull the trigger. Then if he sees Marcelo go back, he's ready to pull the trigger there. Can stop, Marcelo stop, stop. somehow muster up the strength and the opportunity to connect to Perez's jaw and get him on the canvas? That's what he needs, but Perez looks the more likely to finish this here. Again, catch him going, catch him coming. Simple formula. Perez has executed it very well. And these fighters okay. have allowed us to keep our New Year promise that this would be the way to start the New Year with a good, solid fight. They call him the championship rounds for a reason. And Perez proving that he is indeed a world champ. 15 seconds to go. Catch him going again. Yes, they going now. Yes, they going now. Look at the grimace on Marcelo's face. Okay, look at those eyes of Perez. Locked in. Great way to close out our first main event of 2015. Darlies Perez and Jonathan Marcelo. The official decision when we return here to Schumacher. Welcome back to the Friday Night Fight Studios. I am Doug Kazarian. We'll get you back out to California for the decisions of the main event. Of course, we want to remind you, next week we'll be back. Friday Night Fights, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN2. <laughs> Willie Monroe Jr., winner of Foxino 2014 against Brian Vera, the main event. Now, the co-feature marks the return of hammering Hank Lundy as he takes on Peter Petrov. Again, one week from tonight. 9 Eastern on ESPN2. Let's go to the decisions now with Todd and Teddy. Thank you, Doug. Welcome back inside the Shumash Casort, Casino and Resort, or a Casort. We're in Santa Inez, California. There's Jonathan Micello. There's Darlis Perez. A very solid and competitive main event, Teddy. Yes, it was. Early on, Micello was doing okay, but then that right hand started to land. Why? Well, a little slow bringing your left hand back, Marcelo. And when you're in there with a counterpuncher like Perez, you're going to pay a price for it. And then a knockdown in the 11th round. Right hand again. Slow left hand. Good right hand by Perez. He steps back. He stays with him. And down goes Perez. Good counterpuncher there all night long for Perez. That's what he does. That's what he executes. He waits for you to make a mistake. Masella makes mistakes. He jumps in, gives you a chance to time him, and he also goes back with his hands low, gives you a chance to go with him. Perez took advantage of all those chances. Here's Teddy's scorecard, 116-110 okay, for the champ. Go. Facebook, go, go, go. nine rounds to three. What do the three official judges have to say? Let's find out now. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Zachary Young scores about 118-109. Barry Druxman sees it 118-108. And Tom Taylor scores about 120-107. For your winner, by unanimous decision, and still WBA Interim Lightweight World Champion, Darlene Well, some interesting scores, but they got it right. They got it right. 2015, congratulations. You started off the right way, you judges. So Darlis Perez defends his WBA lightweight championship. He'll take it back to Columbia with a big smile on his face. For Bernardo Asuna, Teddy Atlas, and the entire Friday Night Fights crew, I'm Todd Grisham. We'll see you next week. Sports Center is next.